The God of this world has blinded the minds of people to prevent them from seeing the gospel of Christ. And if they can't see Christ, they can't see love. If they can't see Christ, they can't see their neighbor and love their neighbor. The God of this world is the devil. And the devil is hard at work attempting to kill, steal, and destroy the souls of men and women on this earth. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 17 says, Therefore go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you. Go out and be separate from the world, the Bible is telling us here. So we need to be praying that the Holy Spirit would open our eyes so that we, as children of God, can see this world for what it truly is. A place that is temporary. A place that encourages physical pleasure over spiritual things like fasting and praying. It's a world that fosters the love of money, power, and the spirit of pride. It's a world that is shallow and encourages you to chase after material things and worldly success over the presence of God or the kingdom of God. The God of this world wants us to be tolerant of the evil that's on this earth. But saints of God, we need to pray that the Lord would give us the courage and boldness to stand up to the enemy as we declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so as for me and my house, we don't care about the world's values, customs, or agendas. We care only about living a life that serves Jesus Christ a life that is filled with faith so that we may please God. As for me and my house, we care only about living a life that glorifies Jesus Christ as the one true King. And I encourage you to do so. Seek to live a life that points to Jesus Christ as the Savior of the world, a life that points unbelievers to His goodness, His grace and mercy. Beware of the God of this world, saints. If you're not careful, he will creep in. He will creep in and bring a spirit that compromises light for darkness. And my prayer is that God would transform me, change me, and realign my focus so that I will not be distracted or derailed by anything in this world. And I don't know about you, but I want to become obsessed when it comes to chasing after God's will. I want to have a true passion that seeks to do that which is good and acceptable and perfect in the Lord's sight. How many of us can say that we are right with God? Can you say that you are living for Jesus? Does your heart belong to Him? Is your soul committed to Jesus? Has your mind been renewed and transformed by Him? How many of us can say that? Because how many of us can confidently say, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that if the rapture were to take place in these next few moments, we would be caught up in the sky with the Lord? How many of us can say that? The Word of God is true, and it says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 to 17, For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Those in Christ will be caught up with Him in the clouds. This is the rapture. This is what we as children of God can look forward to with great hope and joy, a day where we will be caught up with Jesus Christ and meet Him in the air. Now, as glorious of an event as this is, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51 to 52, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we shall be changed. The rapture will happen in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You won't have time to fix your life and get right with the Lord. You won't have time to repent and ask for forgiveness. The rapture happens in the twinkling of an eye. You will not have time to run to your prayer closet. You won't have time to forgive your neighbor. You won't have time to tell others about what God has done for you. You won't have time to purge your heart because when the rapture happens, 
It happens in an instant. It's in the twinkling of an eye. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. The Bible is calling us to strip off every unnecessary weight in our lives. Do away with the sin which tries to ensnare you and keep you bound. People of God, Jesus Christ is all that matters. And with the time that you have, live with wisdom and make use of today and serve the Lord while you still can. Our days are numbered and we must live for God. So in everything you do, put God first. In the midst of everything you go through, trust God first. We face pressure from our society, our peers, even our friends and colleagues at work. Pressure to achieve worldly success and pleasure, to accumulate wealth, to find lasting romantic love. None of these are necessarily bad things, but the world put these things in place of God and often encourages sin in the pursuit of them. It's easy to fall into conformity, to do what unbelievers do and to be as they are. But as Christian men and women, we are called to model our lives on Christ. We're called to live in a godly manner, fearing the Lord and obeying Him, even when it doesn't make sense to the rest of the world. Romans 12 verse 2 says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. We need to always be mindful that what we do today, what we do while we're here, still alive and breathing, will affect the unseen world for us. Matthew 6 verse 33 puts it this way, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. A different translation says, But first and most importantly seek, aim at, strive after, His kingdom and His righteousness, His way of doing and being right, the attitude and characters of God, and all these things will be given to you also. To put this in perspective, we're being told to choose Jesus Christ in a world that is rejecting Him. We're being called to live a righteous life in a hostile world. Being in the God's camp means that Jesus Christ alone rules and reigns in your life. There's no other God you bow down to but Jesus. You see, living a righteous life in a hostile world means that Jesus Christ has the authority over the choices you make. He rules your thought life. He's the motivating factor behind your actions and deeds. 